Hi there. Uh, due to the fact that it was recently uh, commented on, I revisited one of my old videos. Uh, it was, uh, I think, number 54, where I was talking about the fact that there is no such thing as the perfect camera. Uh, when I looked at it, I realized that a lot has changed in a very short period of time. That particular video is less than two years old. Uh, in it, I mentioned the fact that if you are shooting sports uh, or anything action, you probably need to stick with uh, one of the big two brand uh, DSLRs. Well, times there are changing. Nowadays, of course, we do have mirrorless cameras that can uh, closely match the performance of uh, these workhorse top-of-the-line DSLRs that we are so often uh, seeing. I mean, on the sidelines of any event, you will find Nikon D5s, you will find Canon 1DXs. These are the workhorse cameras. However, now you may get uh, some examples where you'll start seeing cameras from Sony or Olympus or Fuji or Panasonic. All of those manufacturers now have cameras that offer uh, performance that in some ways surpasses those workhorse cameras that we've already spoken of. So I guess the question, you know, is there a perfect camera, has gotten muddled even more. For all intent and purposes right now, the average person, by that I mean the guy who would have gone out and bought a point-and-shoot film camera back in the day, someone who would have gone out and uh, bought a point-and-shoot uh, digital camera uh, just a few years ago. Now they are using their phone. So the higher level cameras are pretty much reserved for those of us who through maybe some flaw in our personalities uh, actually feel the need to have uh, a device that's dedicated to the job it's doing. Uh, when I pick up any of these cameras that I've shown you here on my shelf uh, when I pick it up, I have the feeling that I have a photographic device. When I pick this thing up, it is a photographic device. Uh, it takes pictures. Uh, this is an older model, so it only takes still pictures. However, it's quite satisfying for me to use because I come from the age of film. I come from having a camera that was a dedicated device because there was no other option. Nowadays, when we look at uh, cell phones and realize just how functional they are, uh, we realize that sometimes, just sometimes, we actually feel a little self-conscious about carrying a real camera. You feel like some sort of a dinosaur, some anachronism, something from the distant past that has somehow managed to weasel its way into the present. So, my only takeaway from this particular video, which as you can see is quite short, is that things have changed. Uh, cameras, dedicated cameras, real cameras, have become far more capable across the board. Uh, we still have the top line, you know, as I said, the Nikon D5, the Canon 1DX. They are still there. They are still, you know, cameras tough enough to drive nails with and survive. So if you really need something that's uh, where where the camera's survival is just as important as the pictures you take, those cameras are definitely what you need. However, nowadays, you know, Sony has the Alpha 9, which has the performance level matching uh, these cameras. Now, is it a sturdy? Probably not, but who knows? Uh, Olympus has the OMD EM1 Mark II. Uh, this is being shot on an EM1. The Mark II version has uh, 20 megapixels, so it's it's in the ballpark with these other cameras. Uh, it has extremely fast uh, burst modes that allow you to get uh, you know really into the action. And the autofocus has reached a point where it is comparable, not maybe at the level yet of those workhorse cameras, but comparable. Uh, Fuji has come out with, uh, I believe it's the X-H1, which is uh, more video-centric. However, 
uh, again, it is a camera that is uh, larger and sturdier in order to, again, appeal to the professional market. And of course, with Panasonic, you had the GH5, but now you have the G9. And the G9 is basically their dedicated uh, stills camera. Yes, it still shoots fantastic video, as all Panasonics do. However, uh, it is optimized for the type of still photography that, uh, again, the Nikon D5, the Canon 1DX. Now, I have not named all of the possibilities. I've only scratched the surface. The only point I'm making is that times have changed. This, if nothing else, is really just an update to video number 54. And if you want to go back to 54 and take a look at it again, by all means do so. In it, I basically said there is no such thing as the perfect camera. The camera you have, the camera you need, is the one that best suits your needs. And I did go through a few different types of cameras and a few different brands of cameras in that video. Most of what was in that video still applies today. The only big difference, as I said, is the fact that when it comes to sports and action, Nikon and Canon are no longer, no longer the only games in town. Well, if you enjoyed this rather short video, then uh, please give me a like. Uh, if you would like to see more of my videos, then subscribe to my channel. And, of course, uh, if you think anybody's going to get anything useful from this video, by all means, share it. Bye for now.